techno thing did really fascinate the people because it was new, fresh and it was very important for the rise of the club because the party happened in those days in an unusual way. First you didn't find the space. People they heard, where is they see a techno bunker or so. But people who found the, the stairs and went down, many of them were very shocked. It was a new thing for Army Tour, you know. There was a really kicking sound system and it was dark. You couldn't see your neighbor, you know. You only saw shadows and some strobe lights, you know, flashing around. And you listened to this music. It was an acoustic narcoticum, you know. And this was, was what the people really liked and brought the people together to the kids from east, west, east countries, west countries, black and white. Everybody was there, you know. When we started Tresor in 91, you know, this was like four months after the contract between East Germany and West Germany was signed, you know. The Soviets say they approve of East Germany's open border. Berlin was in a significant euphoria, you know, it was very unique. The wall was open, two countries got together. The euphoria, you could feel it at any corner, even in the supermarket, you know. It was also the situation that there was a lot of space in the east part of the city. What we haven't had, West Berlin, the last square meter was gone, was given away, and now East Berlin was open, and you found many empty buildings. There was just basically a land rush of spaces and apartments and flats because nobody could figure out who owned these places. In 1991, you could knock on a door and if no one answered, you'd pick the lock and it was your apartment, you know. So it's like, okay, we can start a club. And then we had this law in Berlin, no curfew since 1949, you know. So the night was young and open and there was no police control. That was this moment, this moment where we discovered this niche, you know, and um, we found this space. We were lucky to find the best place of uh, Tresor. It was the ultimate DIY club existing in the old space that he did for 15 years under a three month contract seems completely crazy and unviable. But he was brave and he took the risk and he had uh, a great group of people around him to share that bravery with and to kind of share the responsibility of it. The space was very important because in that, that original Leipzigerstrasse basement was so, it was so tight. But with that tight space came a sense of community and a sense of, of memory where, wow, I was there. You know, I was part of this. When your Tresor became actually a pure techno club. The techno thing was, was so new. And it was fueled by a lot of the Detroit and Chicago records that were coming over. That was the music the people really liked here. No words, no baby I love you, no just the dark bass, this coach, coach. And Berlin became over the years the um, capital for electronic music, you know, and a platform where people from all over the world could be sure that they find other people with similar ideas. over here and people are going insane and everything is just super, super crazy, super liberal. You know, people are just doing their thing. It was mind-blowing and just very shocking to me. It can feel like coming home or finding your, your family or something like that and I think that's just a great feeling. I got the news that they were closing and it was really, it was really sad because that place was kind of a once in a lifetime space.
I heard it maybe in December that they will sell it. And then, then they sold it and then we had to get ready to move out end of April 9, 2005. And yeah, that was very sad. So I did not know what to do also the last parties. You know, first you are because you did it now 14 years and you don't know what it means, you know. And then you realize there was a really good team, a good family, a complete new philosophy was born, you know. So yeah, that was 2005. And it was a big gigantic hole that was left in the Berlin ecosystem when the original Trezor went down. The Trezor was unique in the world, you know, and now a shopping mall and something. It's still empty, I, I think, you know. This is the address where the original Tresor was located. It's Leipziger Straße 128. Now it's a quite boring office building, you know. And if you look at the, the names, you know, on the bells, all empty. You know? It looks nobody lives in here. So the city made a big mistake killing the Tresor. Now it's dead, it's just consumption again, you know. It looks like any city. Yeah. It should remind people, you know, who pass by that this was a historic space. This is the area where the change of Berlin did start, you know. My God. We start anew, something new. The story was over Trezor, was over 14 years Trezor. And a um, few months before, a new club has started, uh, Berghain. So they took over I don't, and uh, they made a really great job. But it was not this, you know, it was not this period, this time when the, when the wall came down, you know. This, this was our story, you know. This, I mean, to start also today, a techno club is, is no special thing, you know. The Trezor was also the history, how the young people came together, you know, how this historical moment, you know, this momentum, you know, how they came together and how techno became the soundtrack for the reunification, you know. Okay, that's it, I said, you know. And then I traveled a little bit with friends and one trip was in London and we went to the Tate Modern, you know, to this turbine hall art space and there was this incredible installation by uh, this artist Olaf Urleisen and uh, it's called the weather project and I couldn't believe it you know I came in and uh, I was really blended by the light I said wow what is this no sound you know just this 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 kind of cosmic energy I said Berlin needs also space for this huge significant installations and performances. This was great. And uh, I got back to Berlin, I said, we need, we need something very special. And so I thought the gallery in art space, you know, but more the Berlin style, not too nice, you know, keep it, keep it more rough, more unfinished, you know. And by chance, a friend of mine told me about this space where we are, this old power plant in East Berlin. And I came in and I was really, whew, I was shocked, I was scared, man. I, 
he came up on the stairs and there was no gutters, nothing. It was dangerous. You could fall down and it was really dark and cold. But somehow, you know, I said, wow, what is it? And the same thing happened like in Trezoro. Walt started talking to me again, you know. Oh, oh it's cool. And, so, and I said, a cane, you know, with a ruin and no money. And everybody, you know, after the first talks with architects, I said, you stay away. <laughs> you won't make it. Oh, you have a million dollars or so. And I said, no. But then I also mm, I said, the building is so beautiful. And can I get it? You know, I asked the guys, you know, the owner. Yeah, you can get it. And you want it? You want it? I said, yes, I want to buy it. And I behaved like I would have the money. And I said, okay, we prepare everything. I said, wow. What can I do? You know, but then they called me a week later and said uh, we cannot sell it. You know, it belongs to the whole part of the new one, and we need this ground. Maybe something new will come up in 10, 15 years. We can rent it to you. For I said, okay, can you do that for a very long run? First days, I was standing exactly, I think here, yeah. And I see this power and energy of this turbine tables, you know. Wow, I said, this space has so much potential. Wow. This was completely a horror landscape because you could fall down everywhere, you know. This is the main the center, the main ship, and we have some two side ships. So in total, it's about 100 meters long, 50 more. It's kind of a thing where you just kind of sit back and let Dimitri do his magic. You know, I didn't really know too much about the ins and outs of it. I just knew that something was gonna happen. And then I was contacted and booked for the opening, I guess two or three weeks. Like the opening month was basically like, you know, just jammed to the walls with DJs. The creativity is, is the city. So when Trezor came back in 07, that was a, a big boost. We still depend, you know, on owners. You know, we got a ruin, we fixed it with a lot of love and heart, you know, and, and money, and, and now we, we still don't know if we, how long we can stay. Real estate people have been circling this, this land for, forever, forever. They've been circling like vultures, just wait. In the changing landscape of Berlin, as a city, a space like this needs to have a future because that's so built into the identity of the city also and what people associate the city in, with. That was the best marketing tool and the city has not invested anything, you know. They, they didn't realize that something was happening because they were all asleep, you know. If an institution like Trezor goes down a second time, it will be a domino effect and nobody will be safe. Everybody will go down. It's... Uh a catastrophe <laughs> that you always have to be scared about that they kick you out again. It was just empty, you know. And my hope is now to transform it to a culture space, you know. It's good for Berlin, I think. This time I try that the city wakes up and say, understand this spot is important for our city. You know? for our people, our visitors. This is a very special platform where we can show things we cannot show in the other big houses. This is a big house. This is next to the National Gallery and uh, Hamburger Bahnhof. So the city should wake up and say, okay, 
it's good for the name. We could, um, we should keep it.